Buying a new mountain bike has never been so easy, thanks to the massive amount of choice available to you. But it's also never been so difficult because of the massive amount of choice available to you. Yeah, it seems that every mountain bike has its own unique selling point these days, trying to get your attention. It's a minefield. Long, low, slack geometry, integrated tools, integrated storage compartments for your sandwiches and your snacks, low stand over height for sizing up. But what if you could get a bike with all of these features all rolled into one package? Like a greatest hits playlist, all killer and no filler. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So in this video, we're going to run you through all of those features you need to consider when buying a future-proof mountain bike. To make this video, Merida sent us a couple of their big hitting enduro and all mountain bikes, the 160. Now these are true do-it-all bikes and they represent everything that a big travel bike should offer. And they're also the perfect bikes for us to use in this video to demonstrate all the sorts of tech, bike fit and geometry and stuff that you need to know about when choosing your next mountain bike. Yeah, these bikes are absolutely loaded with tech. Not surprising really when it's coming from one of the biggest bicycle manufacturers on the planet. But for those of you who don't know much about Merida, what can you tell us, Doddy? So let's start with this little decal on the bottom bracket shell that says, designed in Germany, handmade in Taiwan. Now these little handmade in Taiwan decals you see on bicycle frames have caused a bit of a stir over the years. But the fact is the biggest bicycle brands out there proudly have their bikes manufactured in Taiwan because of the excellence that comes from this tiny little manufacturing island. And you could also argue that Taiwan is actually the birthplace of mountain biking. Um, I say that because the first mass produced mountain bikes, they came from Taiwan in 1980. And you could say Merida are largely to thank for this. Now Merida was founded in 1972 to change the international perception of what bicycle manufacturing in Taiwan is all about. And they have certainly achieved that. So sizing might be the first minefield that you come to, and it's really evolved over the years. Only a decade ago, we were measuring bikes in inches. Dotty would be on something like a 21, I would be on something like a 14. And this referred to the length of your seat tube. These days, trail and enduro bikes have more of an emphasis on descending rather than pedaling. So it makes sense that we look more at the length of a front triangle rather than your seat tube. Something like Reach offers you the opportunity to customize a bike's fit for you when you're out of the saddle in the pedals, descending for example, but also the length of a front triangle changes the characteristics of a bike's ride. Something that's long can be more stable over fast technical terrain and something that is short can be more nimble and agile, particularly in cornery single track. So it makes sense that this sort of sizing allows you to customise the fit, but also the style of your ride. Typically these days you'll hear frame sizing referred to with extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. But Merida have further simplified things by calling theirs extra short, short, mid, long, and extra long. And they achieve this with a stack measurement and a very cool dropper post. So the problem with sizing up on a conventionally sized bike is that you might end up with a longer reach, yes, but you also get a longer seat tube, which means bad standover clearance, and you might get a dropper post that doesn't fit you. So do keep an eye out for brands like Merida who offer a really short seat tube across all of their size ranges and they have the same dropper post which is actually adjustable from 30 to 230 mils. So effectively, me and Doddy could ride the same bike if we wanted to. Yeah, it's a very cool post. Um, 
But the other important thing is the stack measurement. So we all know geometry that's referred to on bikes, head angle, seat angle, etc., etc. And you'll hear reach, which Anne has referred to a few times already. Reach meaning the length of the bike, but stack means the height. So unlike reach that's calculated with the vertical and then met with the head tube, stack is essentially the height of the head tube. And usually on smaller frames, you have a lower or a smaller stack number and on larger frames you have a larger one. Uh, yes, that fits small riders and tall riders accordingly, but it doesn't enable you to move around within the sizing. What Merida has done is choose to keep the stack numbers a bit more similar between all of their sizes and that enables riders that are smaller like Anna, for example, to size up without being penalized and having your bars really high up in the air. And essentially, if you're between sizes, it means you get the benefit of actually choosing which size suits you rather than the size that you can actually just fit on because of the height of the seat post or the height of the front end. And if you're thinking about sizing up or sizing down, bear in mind that some models have different suspension kinematics to suit that sizing. So Merida do this intentionally so that the average rider expected weight for that size is taken into consideration. So an extra short may have less support so that a light rider like myself will have more usable travel. And the extra long uh, for big old units like Doddy, hey might have more support so he's less likely to blow through that travel and bottom out. Uh, yeah, also though, an additional bonus in being able to size up and down on the bikes there is if you wanted to go like super quick and race somewhere super rough, by sizing up, you get a suspension platform that can handle that a bit better because it's designed for someone that's heavier or someone that wants to ride a bit heavier. Okay, so let's talk about suspension. Now, as you might imagine, the 160 features 162 millimeters of travel out the back, paired with a big old 170 mil fork. A big travel bike needs a decent suspension platform to support its intention. This one uses a single pivot with a linkage here to drive that shock. Now, you might notice it doesn't actually have a pivot out the back here. Merida's chosen to have a flex state approach here because it moves a minimal amount. So what they say is that they can remove the pivot, remove the hardware, remove the weight that goes with that. It actually moves less than a similar setup on their cross-country bike. So it just proves the point, you don't need that stuff down there. Anyhow, this particular bike is compatible with coil and air shocks. Now this is something to take into account, especially with these bigger travel bikes, because many riders are choosing to fit coil shocks because of the way they ride. But the fact is a coil shock by nature is quite linear, an air shock is quite progressive. If the back end of your bike is linear, then it's gonna work really well with an air shock, but not so well with a coil shock because of the fact you're gonna be sat really low in the travel and use that travel too easily. So when buying a bike, make sure if coil shocks appeal to you, that you're getting a bike that is compatible. It's always a bonus if the bike can accept both, like this one. The Merida 160 is a big bike, but what if you are not sure if you want a big travel bike? What if you feel like you might want a short travel bike as well? What if you think you'll be racing enduro now, but in the future you might want a short travel bike? Well, keep an eye out for brands like Merida who do use similar frames or the same frame for their long travel and short travel bikes. The Merida 160 actually uses the exact same frame as the 140, which is the shorter travel version. So that means you can effectively swap out the shock and the forks to have either two bikes in one or something different in the future. Wheel size is something you need to consider with your next bike as well. Now, although you can get bikes with 27 and a half and 29 inch wheels, 29 is commonplace on bikes like these. Uh, although you do tend to see the smaller size bikes being specced with a smaller rear wheel and many of the bigger size bikes like this one being specced with a bigger rear wheel. And that suits me to a T. I love 29 inch wheels. Well, personally, I prefer the mixed wheel setup. Uh, the smaller wheel gives me more clearance, not just because of my height, but because I ride steeper, more aggressive terrain. However, if you think that this could potentially be a fad or you can't choose between a mixed wheel or a full 29er setup, then future proofing means you need to look out for frames that can change the rear wheel. Now, some bikes require some minor adjustments, maybe swapping out linkage at best, 
Uh, but do keep an eye out for bikes like this where you can actually just use a flip switch uh, and you won't need to do any heavy duty maintenance and you can just swap out that back wheel. So you effectively have two bikes in one as well. Added bonus is that when you use the flip switch and put it into a mullet setting, I get 170 mils of travel instead of 162. So again, contributing to two bikes in one. Something else you really need to take into account with your next bike is proprietary tech. Now, as good as some of this stuff is, and you see some incredible innovations, you also need to take into account, being devil's advocate here, how are you going to work on the bike and get spare parts for it and kind of future-proof it? Bikes like this are using things that are easy to get in bike shops around the world. You haven't got trunnion mounts, you've got standard shock mountings on here. You've got standard BSA threaded bottom bracket, ISCG chain guide mounts there, or for fitting a bash plate on there or whatever you fancy. SRAM UDH, the universal derailleur hanger on the back. And you've even got little mounts here on the seat tube for fitting eight pins integrated dropper posts, if that takes your fancy. The point is, Bikes should be easy to work on and easy to get spares for. So do take that into account, especially if you like to travel with your bike. Other things that have been cropping up on the features list in more recent years are things like storage and integrated tools. So I've got an integrated multi-tool in the back here. I've got a tube wrap, water bottle, obviously, and also a storage or a service hatch down in the back for things like pumps. Now, personally, I really favor this because I race a lot and I think it's much safer to have your tools on your bike than on your person. It's also nice and light and airy and I feel better in the summer. So it goes to show, no matter what bikes you're looking at, there's a lot of technical features out there that can be quite confusing. So don't forget to pick the sizing that's going to suit you, the features that suit you, and the sort of wheel travel and things like that. Yeah, and hopefully we've gone a long way to help you identify some of the features that may be really important to you, as it will be different from person to person. But you know what? Let us know down in the comments below if there's a feature out there that you think is future-proof and that you always look for when you're buying a bike. Let us know and help out that GMBN community in the future.